Hi everyone, hello, happy Saturday, how's it going? It's been a while, it's me, Predomania, coming to you live from Chicago. I was not in Chicago the last week though, I was on vacation. And it was great. The, the downside though for you guys is we haven't had a stream in a while, but uh, today we are, yay! Hello, hello, hello everyone, hello, hello. Who all is here? Hello, I smile. Hello, heterosapiens. Hey, big nerd. Hello, Kayla. <coughs> Excuse me. Yo, Gamzy, how's it going? Welcome. Andrew, how's it going? Happy, happy Saturday. Dre, hello, hi, hello. I have not been here in a while either, so that makes two of us. All right. Hey, Kit Kat, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. How are you? How is life? <coughs> oh, man. All right, well, I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you're having a good weekend so far. I, yo, Jelly Possum, hello. Happy Saturday. I, uh, <coughs> I'm trying to drink a little extra coffee this morning because I definitely stayed up too late playing Fortnite last night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Fort Fortnite is uh, currently my jam. Oh, that was like a really jazzy like lick from from Black at the end there. That was cool. Anywho. All right. <clears throat> oh, I smile the human jukebox. But Well, hey, that's cool, Kit Kat. Uh if that was recent, happy happy recent birthday. So that's that's cool. I had a birthday recently too. Um, but yeah, so I was, uh, so I was on vacation last week, guys. My girlfriend and I went to the, uh, the Pacific Northwest. It was actually my first time out there. We went to, uh, went to Oregon for a few days. Uh, we stayed in, uh, we stayed in Eugene for a couple days because she has a friend out there who just got married. Um, so that was pretty cool. Eugene's a pretty cool town. Um, she actually went, she actually went there for, uh, for school and uh, she just showed me around the town like we we did like we rented bikes we like biked around and like I got to see the football stadium because I'm into sports and like lots of like nice little places to eat and stuff and like the weather was just fantastic um, and then we went up to Seattle for a couple days and holy cow Seattle is a great city I really like Seattle um, if any of you ever get the chance to go to Seattle Go to the Museum of Pop Culture, because that is, like, nerd heaven. They have, like, all these exhibits of, like, like, different, like, stuff from, like, movies and TV and comics and video games and stuff like that. They have a Marvel exhibit right now that has, like, a bunch of the costumes that were actually worn in the, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies over the last ten years. So, like, they had Iron Man outfits, um, there's, like, costumes from Thor, like, all the Avengers, Doctor Strange, all that stuff. It was, like, super cool. Actually, let me see if I, real quick, can pull up probably my favorite picture that, uh, that we took at the, uh, at the uh, Marvel exhibit. Let me pull this up. See if I can share it with you guys. Come on, photos, you can do it. I believe in you. All right. Let me see if I can get OBS to grab this real quick. Yes, highly recommend Museum of Pop Culture. We did a lot of other things too in Seattle, like we went up in the Space Needle. Um, we visited Pike Place Market. Um, we saw the gum wall, which is literally a wall covered in chewing gum, <laughs> which is kind of gross, but kind of cool. Uh, we went to a Mariners game. Um, all kinds of stuff. We did a room escape, too. We did, like, their hardest room escape, and we basically beat it. Like, the very, we didn't finish the last puzzle in time, but, like, the last puzzle was, like, just kind of, like, a physical challenge. You know that, you know that one, like arcade game not like the box arcade games but like like that one game where you have like the metal wand and you have to like 
loop it through like some metal and if it touches the metal like you lose they had like a giant jumbo version of that and that was like the last puzzle to get out of the room and we just like ran out of time but we solved the puzzles basically um anyway let me see if I can grab what I was trying to grab uh da 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 da, da. Well, that's not working. Yeah, let me let me actually see if I can grab something else instead. Um, no, not that. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> so, guys, I'm trying to sh I'm trying to show you a picture, and I am failing to do so. <laughs> Um, let's try. Oh, which one do I want to do? This one? Let's go with this one. Yep. So there's... Okay, there's the picture. This is on my Facebook. Um, but yeah, that's my favorite picture from the Marvel exhibit. So, just wanted to show you guys. It's me and my girlfriend kissing Spider-Man. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we had a fun time at the Marvel exhibit. Anywho. I'm back from vacation. And we're going to read some Homestuck today. We are on uh, Act 6, Intermission 2. Um, oh, by the way. Just so you all know, I'm just going to say this now. I'm going to be out of town again next weekend. We're actually going back to, I'm actually going back to my hometown. I'll take my girlfriend with me. She's, we're going to visit with my mom and uh, some family as well. The, the big thing we have to do is uh, she's meeting my grandma, my 95 year old grandma. So, <laughs> so that's kind of a big deal. Um, yeah, I'm sorry guys. I went on vacation and I'm like, Hey, I'm back, but hey, I'm leaving again, but it's only for next weekend. I, uh, I think the only other time this summer I'm going to be out of town is like the first weekend of August. So, so hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to get through more Homestuck this month. So anyway, I could do that in Hero Sapiens. Yeah, I could just teach you guys math. All right. Math lesson one. Uh, one plus one is two. Things like that. All right. Anywho. All right, how about I read some Homestuck? I've been talking for like the last, I don't know, 10 minutes or so about me. Let's read some Homestuck. Um, I'll tell you what though, guys, I, I have to be totally honest. Oh, Cole Rains, well, happy birthday last Saturday. Cheers, cheers to you. By the way, I don't know if I, if I showed you guys this. This is uh, one of my newest coffee mugs. Oh, the Chroma's being weird with it, but it's, uh, it's a Grillbees mug for you Undertale fans out there. I got this off of Fan Gamer. There's got got like a little Grillbees logo there. It's cool. It is Grillbees, Savas. It is Grillbees. All right. Anywho, what was I saying? Oh yeah, guys, I gotta be honest. I I've forgotten like everything that happens in Homestuck because it's been so long since our last Homestuck stream. So I'm just gonna start over at the beginning of Homestuck. And we'll just kind of like read until we catch up to where we were, okay? Okay, let's go. A young man stands in his bedroom. It just so happens that today, the 13th of April, 2009, is this young man's birthday. Though it was 13 years ago he was given life, it is only today he will be given a name. What will the name of this young man be? Enter name. Zoo Smell Poop Lord. <laughs> Try again, smartass. Okay, seriously though, let's do Act 6 Intermission 2. Hey, yum! You made it! Hello, welcome! <laughs> Cole Reigns, that actually is like the best summary. <laughs> Wait, how about we do this, you guys? How about... How about we alternate back and forth? So like, 
I'll read a page from Act 1, and then I'll jump back and read a page from Act 6 or Mission 2, and then I'll jump back and read a page from Act 1. We'll just keep going back and forth in that fashion until we... Um, all die. <laughs> Spoilers, Savas! Good lord! <laughs> okay. Anyway, Act 6 or Mission 2. Hold still, Slick. Wait, is this... Is this baby Slick? What is this? God damn it, will you quit fidgeting and drink your milk? What in the world? It's warm and nutritious. Fresh from the butler's teat. You just watched me milk it. What? <laughs> what in the world is going on? Oh, for fuck's sake, you are impossible. Ms. Paint! Is that soup ready yet? He's being a dick. <laughs> what? Okay. So, so, this is... So, this is, uh... Andrew Hussey. And... That's like, Butler Lucis or something over there. And this is Spade Slick, but... Spade Slick got, like, the... The... The Frieza Darth Vader treatment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Show this image to someone who has never seen Homestuck. Oh my gosh. I should like screen cap this and send this to my girlfriend and be like, so what do you think of this? This is what I this is what I read on stream. What's your opinion? <laughs> oh man. Oh, so my girlfriend and I were, were both playing Fortnite online last night. We're doing the 50v50 mode. And there was one match, I was so proud. There was one match where like, I got taken down by someone, but then my girlfriend like, immediately avenged my death. I was very happy. She took out the person who took me out. <laughs> I felt very loved. <laughs> Nothing says love like being avenged in Fortnite. Also, can you bring me some gauze? He stabbed me again. <laughs> Oh, goodness. It was one of his more tentative stabbings, though. I think maybe he meant it as a uh, sort of... Thank you? How has she not watched all my streams already? Um, because she has a life. She's... She's too busy having a boyfriend to watch all of her boyfriend's streams. <laughs> that's what I... That's what I say, anyway. Yeah so, yeah, so yum, I was noticing that the, uh, it's like the little licorice candies. What were they? Like licorice bears or something like that? I can't remember exactly. But I am notice. I did notice that, uh, pretty much right away. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, anywho. Oh, Scotty dogs, that's right. <laughs> Those are definitely not bears, they're Scotty dogs. Cole Rains, yes! I, I watched all of Steven Universe this week, including last night, and oh my god, 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 oh my god. That's all I'll say about Steven Universe. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, that's all I'll say about Steven Universe. Oh my god, okay. Nope, wait, he just stabbed me again. I don't think that one was the thank stab. It was more like just a regular stab. What is this right here? This looks like some kind of... Betty Crocker thing, maybe. Yes, Savis, you do need to catch up on Steven Universe. Everyone needs to catch up on Steven Universe. I should probably have confiscated his knife before I gave him these super fast robot arms. My god, he is frisky with those things. I like how cheerful Ms. Paint looks like. Is that an origami, Scotty? Is that an aura, Scotty? Scotty Gami? I don't know. Hey, put that down. I said settle your ass down. Where's the gratitude, Slick? I'm waiting on you hand and foot here. Where do you think you are, Butler Island? You know what? Fuck Butler Island. You just died and went to Butler fucking heaven. I see that knife. Yeah, that one. You're not fooling anyone. No, Banjo. 
You don't want to continue watching until you've caught up? Yeah, that's my bad. I didn't upload the recent streams until, like, yesterday. But the good news is, I'm all caught up on my YouTube backlog, so, yay! All of my past streams are now on YouTube. I mean, not, not all of them, but, like, the ones I've been uploading. <laughs> if you don't calm down, I'm going to repair your other eye. You know, the one you refused to let me fix because you thought the eye patch looked cool? I'll do it! Ms. Paint, what's taking so long with that soup? This is a man in sore need of his Scotty dogs, if I ever saw one. Ms. Paint, are you listening? Uh-oh, did she see something? She saw something that made her drop the tray. No, the Scotty soup, no! No! Oh dear, is that Lord English? Oh god, that is Lord English. Holy crap, is that like the head of Hussybot? Oh dear god. So, so this is Lord English. Um, wow. Oh my goodness. Well, this isn't going to end well, is it? Oh, meanwhile, John and Jade have completed, looks like, year one of their... of their trek. No, wait, no, no, this isn't John and Jade. This is, uh, these are the trolls. The trolls and, uh, Dave and Rose. And also Wayward Vagabond, if I remember correctly. And they're being chased, yeah, they're being chased by Jack, right? And also, um, Peregrine Mendicant is chasing them as well. Alright, <clears throat> let's show the pester log. Current carcinogenesis. Right now, open a memo on board Fruity Rumpus Asshole Factory. Boring road trip through the fucking afterlife edition. I can't believe I'm actually doing this memo bullshit again. I guess I don't know what else to do. I just need to air out some shit with somebody, and everyone here has their heads so far up their nooks, I want to scream louder than I usually do. They're troll nooks and human nooks, whatever the hell a human nook even is. You know? I do mean dear sweet mare. Sweet mare, blank page. Dear sweet mare. Hey, are you there? Future carcinogenesist, ten minutes from now, respond to memo. Fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, hey, I can't, I just cannot fucking believe I have to go through all this bullshit again with you slash me. What the fuck made me think this would be a good idea? Dude, what's with the text? Uh, yeah, why is it red? Uh, why don't you tell me? I just have this incredible premonition you're about to anyway. Why the fuck would I know why you changed your text red? We don't do that, the showy self-absorbed paint your text in your blood color thing, or eye color, or whatever. It's for attention greedy, insecure losers. Sure is. Hmm. Sarcastic wonder. <laughs> I'm just thinking. This really makes our conversations easier to read. Remember those insane blocks of gray, angry text we used to write together? What was that? Like, half a sweep ago already? Is it weird that I'm actually looking back on all that insanity with a certain amount of fondness? <sighs> At least shit was happening. It's so boring out here, and living with the humans is just getting kind of... weird. Anyway, this is actually a lot more decipherable. Maybe you're onto something. Well, hey, check it out. Shit just got nostalgic. Look at that. I'm feeling more sentimental about this moronic, moronic conversation already. Okay, why do you have to go from zero to douche-like in the blink of a fucking glance nugget? The blink of a glance nugget? I've been at this for ten minutes already, and counting! I just think you might have been onto something with the red text. I was trying to pay you a compliment, you antagonizing fuck. I mean, we only ever got in the habit of typing in gray to hide our blood color, right? And like, one, everybody knows it now, it was the worst kept fucking secret ever, and two, even if they didn't, it's just us here, and obviously we've both already known it all our lives. 
unless <clears throat> unless we're both so neurotic, we actually still want to act like it's a secret we're keeping from each other. But I'd like to think the days of that astounding degree of mental illness are behind us. I want to kill myself, but I can't until the conversation runs its course. This is the worst hell imaginable. Shut the fuck up. That's a that's the exact kind of melodrama I'm talking about. We're better than that now, man. I'm gonna do the mature thing here and switch my text to red. There. I think this should be the universal convention for when two of the same people are talking to each other. One guy bites the bullet and talks in red. Seriously, one of us has to be the grown-up here. It's kind of like that's kind of like Dirk in the autoresponder, in a way, because the autoresponder like talks talks in red. <clears throat> And it's like, Dirk and the autoresponder talking are kind of like Dirk talking to himself, in a sense. So, so yes. Um, let's see. Seriously, one of us has to be the grown-up here. Oh, I get it now. When I type in red, it's showy and insecure. But when you do it, you are shouldering the pragmatic burden of a martyr. Even though it was my fucking idea to do that in the first place ten minutes ago. You piece of shit. Okay, god damn it, stop being so sensitive. I fucking apologize. Can you just talk about your stupid feelings already so we can get this nightmare over with? <clears throat> and you know what makes even more sense about the fact that Dirk talks to himself with the autoresponder being read? <clears throat> They established, like, in Act 6, Act 2, that the autoresponder was, like, based on, like, 13-year-old Dirk. <clears throat> so, so it's like, it's like future Dirk is talking to present Dirk, or, like, present Dirk is talking to past Dirk, in a sense. So it's, like, actually pretty similar to... Future car cat talking to present car cat, or present car cat talking to past car cat. So, there's parallels here. <clears throat> All right, um, let's see. Well, look, it wasn't supposed to be this lopsided thing where I spill all my feelings into idiot space while some shithead yells at me. I was kind of thinking there would be some give and take, since you presumably share a lot of my thoughts. Okay, whatever, just say some stuff already. All that shit I said ten minutes ago. I will riff with you and somehow pretend it doesn't feel like I'm rehashing a bunch of lines written in barely dried ink. Okay, well, I'm having a hard time even putting my thoughts into words about this bizarre trek through the ring. At first it was just bland and uneventful, but that was kind of a relief, remember? Not having to worry about getting killed all the time, or trying to rally a bunch of uncooperative troops toward an impossible objective? Yeah. But then, as if it wasn't enough that sometimes we visit these crazy dream bubbles when we go to sleep, we started physically passing through them too. <clears throat> yes. Parallels, perpendiculars, and double Mobius reach events. Indeed, all of those things. Like, I think I could handle it better if it was just one thing or the other. Like. Only the monotonous day-to-day -day drudgery on the same gloomy fucking meteor with the same bunch of ridiculous people and basically nothing to do ever except get all up in each other's business. Or only a sweeps-long safari through an ephemeral, em ephemeral realm of ghost memories and dead friends shitting around in a haphazard exi existential clusterfuck. But having to deal with both in totally random intervals... It's kind of taking its toll. I hear you, man. That was when I was supposed to say that. But for the record, I guess I meant it. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I miss all of my dead friends a lot. Even the assholes. I miss them, too. Maybe even especially them in some perverse way. And I should be relieved that they all seem to be happy in some way. Even if it's by floating nebulously through dream projections with their freaky blank eyes. And I guess I am relieved about that. But at the same time, it's left me unsettled for reasons I can't really put my finger on. <laughs> yes, slight existential crisis. Oh, oh. Good, good catch, Savas. Yeah. 
There's uh, horror terror tentacles happening in the background here. Is this a dream bubble they're approaching? That's what I'm guessing. Looks like they might be about to pass through another one. <clears throat> oh, hi. What's this? Oh, wow. That's like some god tier friends up there. Oh, this looks like Rose. So this looks like Rose. This looks like dear sweet mayor. Then I can't quite tell who those two are, but we'll see. I know why. You do? Yeah. Well, of course you do. I guess because I just told you ten minutes ago, making it like a self-fulfilling epiphany? Well, there's that. But also this conversation helped clarify some thoughts, too, in spite of its excruciating pointlessness. Part of what's bothering you about this is what it means about mortality. Yeah... I think that's part of it. After visiting who knows how many dream bubbles, and hanging out with who knows how many dead friends, and copies of dead friends from alternate timelines, I start to wonder, does death even really mean anything? Did life mean anything, for that matter? Was the point of life just to go around collecting a bunch of painful and awkward experiences? to supply material for the revolving memory collage that serves as the backdrop to a much longer, emptier, emptier, uh, emptier stretch of existence? And how unnerving is it running into our dead doppelgangers from Doom Timelines? Hey, you're preaching to the choir, bro. It's fucked up. Never mind what it means about a person's identity or sense of self or which guy gets to be considered the real guy, or philosophical bullshit like that. Just on the level of what your decisions and actions during your life actually mean, sometimes we run into these versions of ourselves who reach God tier for fuck's sake. But in spite of being more successful than we were by that particular objective measure, they get punished for that. Because it wasn't the thing that needed to happen? Man, wow. <laughs> yeah, they type super fast. <laughs> like, look, there's a god tier for fairy, and here's a god tier Aridin. Pretty much. So, where does that leave us? If we are to take some lesson from that, what is it? Try to be great and successful, but maybe not too great and successful? Or maybe don't try at all in some cases. Because if you do, some giant fucking squid in the middle of nowhere is going to be like, Not so fast, my hideous monster pla- My hideous monster plans beg to differ. Don't you think we'd have been better off if we didn't even know about any of this dream bubble shit? Well, yeah. That's what I was thinking ten minutes ago. But now I don't even know. Yeah, well, at least you're listening. Even if you were being your usual, usual shitty self about it. Nobody else even gets this. They don't want to hear it. Like, Terezi? It used to be that she would at least humor even my most ludicrous vitriolic garbage all the time. Remember those days? Way back before we even knew what a human was? Now, back in Alternia, when my biggest fear was... If people found out I was a mutant... <laughs> how quaint can you fucking get? I was an idiot not to understand how good things were back then. Between us, now it's like... What? This part of the com- This part of the conversation. Oh my gosh. These are great questions. <laughs> that's, gosh, that's that's just a mind bender there. But sums it up, hetero. It's like everything in Doom timelines is canon. <laughs> it's almost like. So, like, the idea that they're going through, like, all these dream bubbles and, like, there's all these characters from, like, all these doomed timelines, it's almost as if to say, like, 
any Homestuck fan fiction that you come up with could be considered canon, because you could just say, it's from a doomed timeline. <laughs> so there you go. All of Homestuck fan fiction is canon. <laughs> I have declared it to be so. <laughs> Oh, look, the mayor is, like, better now. I'm just looking around at- oh my gosh, they're, like, drawing, like... This is, like, Sweet Bro Hella Jeff style, almost. So, so, Terezi and Dave are just drawing, like, cool stuff together. Wayward Vagabond is, like, the mayor again. There's Fago everywhere. Oh, there's Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff, like, dolls right here. Well, drawings, I think, actually. Not dolls, just drawings. Oh, man. This is fantastic. <laughs> Paradox space is weird. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, I, I didn't notice that, Jelly Possum. Yeah, dead god tier for fairy healed Wayward Vagabond. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's like... It's like some weird combination of Deus Ex Machina and time shenanigans and all that stuff. Anyway. Oh, get over yourself. Our 10 minutes is almost up. I would just like to know, is she punishing me for something? I don't need to remind you how much time she spends gall gallivanting around the meteor with you know who. No, you sure as fuck do not. After all this time, I still can't tell if she's serious about that or doing it to fuck with me. What do you think? Is there something legitimately red going on there? How can I command such absolute mastery over the romantic sciences yet remain perplexed by this? Maybe I can't get a read because he's not a troll and therefore he has no idea what the fuck he's doing? It's like trying to decipher an intricate courtship process between an attractive potential mate sprit and some sort of vegetable. Like, it doesn't compute. Fuck, this is so embarrassing listening to this. Make it stop. Quiet, I'm talking. <laughs> I just feel like maybe I'm past the point of no return with her. Where before there was margin for error, probably way more than I ever deserved. And now, that's it. She's totally had it, and there's a new dude with candy blood in town. He's just got it all, doesn't he? He's a much better artist than I am, for one thing. And his horns are so nubby they don't even exist. Talk about hitting the jackpot. Am I off base? We just went over this. I didn't get it then because I was too busy whining and feeling sorry for myself like you're doing now, so pipe down and listen. Okay, so Carcat's over there being all jealous and stuff. Meanwhile, Terezi and Dave are hanging out. You've been sending her an endless stream of mixed signals for as long as you've known her. Oh, bullshit. Like, fuck it's bullshit. It's all too clear to me now. It's a classic case of quadrant vacillation and you don't even know it. No wonder she was frustrated and got fed up with you. This is outrageous. Is it? Tell me. How many times have you treated her in a way that could be objectively construed as a form of black solicitation? That's just... No, that's how we've always rolled together. It's like spirited platonic contention. Totally normal territory in a healthy, healthy mate sprit ship. Yeah, a healthy one. Not one involving a demented loudmouth who can't keep his shit under control. Let me ask you. How much of that animosity is innocent platonic rage? Could it be that subconsciously you want to push things with her into caligonous turf? S maybe see how things work out there? See if you can have your grub and call it too? That way you have her all to yourself. Fuck you. You want her in every quadrant like a desperate fool. Do you realize what you've become? You are the sad joke character in the rom-com. You know the guy I'm talking about, who's greedy and indiscriminate about filling every quadrant, totally oblivious to it, and in the end has fuck all to show for it. I don't have to put up with this. You kind of do for at least another 10 minutes. No, fuck that, I'm so done with you. Yeah, you pretty much are because the 10 minutes are about up and I'll be gone. Just like it'll be you and the other guy spinning your globes together like a couple stupid pieces of shit ad infinitum. <laughs> I love these memos. Oh gosh. Carcat's like, Aah! 
Man, I must have been insane to think anything is different. You haven't changed at all. You're just as petty and horrible as ever. Fuck you forever. Fuck every 10 minutes ahead version of myself all the way into 10 fucking, 10 minute fucking eternity. I can't even do this, not anymore. <laughs> yeah, well you made your cocoon, pal. Now we have to take turns shitting in it, together. It is the most pathetic, smelliest dance of all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hmm. What the fuck is it now? It just occurred to me. This dumb tantrum I threw, this entire bad mood? It was just another idiotic, self-fulfilling reach-around, wasn't it? What are you talking about? I mean, where did this even come from? It was like spontaneously generating self-loathing with no discernible source. Was this emotional outburst ever even real? Oh no, don't even start with that. Do not start getting existential about my anger. You better fucking believe this is real. Are you sure, man? You condescending fuck. How fucking dare you call into question the legitimacy of my feelings as if they aren't completely justified and totally 100% grounded in absolute stone cold concrete goddamned objective motherfucking reality. Yeah, see, I've completely set you off here, and now you don't even know what you're saying. Sorry, this was my fault. I'm gonna go try and calm myself down. Oh, so this is why you decided to leave this conversation. You got owned, so you had to slink away like a fucking coward? Nice try, shithead, but I'm not done with you yet. You think you're the only one who can list his 10 minute away self's flaws? I could go on forever. FCG banned himself from responding to Memo. Fine, get out of here, good riddance. As if I could take another sponge ringing of sponge ringing minute of your disingenuous drivel. Pascar Synergeneticist ten minutes ago opened a memo on board Fruity Rumpus Asshole Factory, boring road trip through this fucking afterlife edition. I can't believe I'm actually doing this memo bullshit again. I guess I don't know what else to do. I just need to air out some shit with somebody, and everyone here has their heads so far up their nooks, I want to scream louder than I usually do. They're troll nooks and human nooks, whatever the hell a human nook even is, you know? <laughs> oh my god, I love this, uh... I love this image right here. <laughs> this is like, Inception. Hey, are you there? Current carcinogenesis right now responded to memo. Fuck! 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 Oh! Hey! I can't- I just cannot fucking believe I have to go through all this bullshit again with you slash me. What the fuck made me think this would be a good idea? Dude, it's with the text. Ugh. Why don't you tell me? I just have this incredible premonition you're about to anyway. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Meanwhile. Ah. There's Kanaya. So there's Vampire Kanaya and God Tier Rose and God Tier Dave. I'm loving all these... I like all this this sprite stuff. Oh my gosh, is this like that uh, that machine from a Chrono Trigger where you like get in and it's like HPMP restored, but you're still hungry. <laughs> hey, sup? Anyone seen Terezi around? No. Why? We were gonna do a thing, but she's not around and not answering my messages. On any one of the probably 10,000 computers lying around that they would show up on. A thing? Yes, a thing. I see. Shut up! What about you? Have you seen her? No. Have you seen Gamzee? Are you serious? Of course not. I haven't seen that guy at all since the first day we got here. Not once. Yeah, I know. Talk about an elusive juggalo. Oh, it could be a coffee machine. I guess that's also true, Savas. <laughs> Talk about an elusive juggalo. Probably like the shyest fucking juggalo of all time. I'm pretty sure only car cats seen him. Don't expect him to don't expect him to rat him out either because of the Moirail the Morail junk. Moirail? Wa-rail? Alien words. 
I wouldn't expect him to. I wouldn't even ask it would be... I wouldn't even ask. It would be really bad form to ask him that. Yeah. I mean, I bet you think you're imparting some really obscure cultural facts about trolls. But, really, if a human said to another human, Hey man, can you tell me where your best clown friend is hiding so I can go chainsaw him to death? Just FYI, that would probably be bad form too. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, it's been a year already. I think he's really intent on hiding and hanging on to those dead bodies. He's probably scared to death of you at this point anyway. Maybe you should just let it go. Hmm. Rose, back me up. I try to stay out of troll interpersonal politics. Interpersonal? Wait, are you saying this is like a spade quadrant thing? Is she trying to be his ki kismet fish? <laughs> I'm saying no such thing. Well, if she hates him, isn't that what that means? Dave, don't be a dick. You're embarrassing her. Haha, <laughs> no I'm not. She's cool. Look, she's being cool about it. I'm being cool about it. See? It's not like that. I just want to find him and at least wound him somewhat. <laughs> yeah, see, I knew there had to be a perfectly harmless and unerotic explanation. Shh. No. See, I'm explaining this badly. All I'm saying is basically just fuck that guy. <laughs> That's great. Oh, she's mad. Got it. So, what are you up to in here? What's with all these books? Research. We're trying to put all the pieces of the puzzle together. You are aware this meteor has many secret rooms scattered throughout, including libraries, right? Hell yeah! We looted one of them for the Cantown Project! <laughs> for the Cantown Project. Cantown? I told you about Cantown, didn't I? No? Well, the thing about Cantown, and all there really is to say about Cantown is, it's awesome. The end? Wow, what a story. <laughs> what a story, Mark! <laughs> <laughs> so, what is the point of this research? Primarily to gain a more thorough understanding of the situation we'll be entering when we arrive. I thought you pretty much already knew the situation, since you can see the future. Oh my god, I've told you, I can't see the future. Yes you can, you totally can. Okay, but not all of it, only certain relevant pieces. It's a bit frustrating when people make that presumption about you. For instance, you are a knight of time. Since you have such mastery over time, doesn't that mean you should know everything about the future too? <laughs> no, that's totally dumb. I could know things about the future if I time traveled and found out firsthand. Nobody's mistaking that about me. I'm a time traveler, not a fucking fortune teller. It's simple as shit. <laughs> right. So there are significant limitations on what you can know governed by certain rules. That's how it is for a seer, too. Okay, whatever. But I will say that I have been able to use these abilities to assist with research. I could treat my finite glimpses as, as an additional source of information. If you combine that with the knowledge we've gathered from these texts, and things we've learned from our various encounters with the deceased, with a bit of inference and deduction, a more detailed picture is coming into focus. Nice. Do you want to hear about it? Uh, now? Yes, why not? It's been a year. It seems like all we've done on this trip so far is indulge in lavish interior decoration projects and screw around with mysterious Cantown initiatives, which may or may not be consuming valuable library resources as building materials. We could make at least some effort to squeeze in annual briefings on our objective. Yeah, that would be pretty legit of us. I think you'll find that when it comes to striving for a reasonable proc approximation of legitimacy, we are simply the most barely adequate there is. <laughs> okay, I didn't really catch any of that bullshit because I wasn't listening. I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and get primed to listen to you saying a lot of stuff like that. Do you want some? Um, sure. Alright. Ooh, there's some black goop here. Oh! It totally is the copy machine. Also the thing from Chrono Trigger. I'm pretty sure. Kanaya? No, thank you. 
Okay. Uh, this fucking thing. Where did you even unearth this piece of shit from? Oh, okay, there it goes. Two hot revitalizing cups of shitty coffee, fresh out of the weird pod. Why do we even drink this shit? I guess just because this thing is here? Like, somehow the temptation is even stronger because the coffee sucks? Don't know how the fuck that works. Wish there was such a thing as apple juice on Troll World. Could go for a bottle of AJ. I wonder if there is any booze squirreled away on this meteor. Kinda feels like we should be drinking our asses off here. No adults, nothing to do. That's what you do without adults, right? Get wasted all the time? Wait, what the fuck am I saying? Trolls don't even have adults. Well, they do. But they're all in outer space being insane badasses. Uh, I guess they do have the stupid nanny monsters. Do the monsters give a shit if they get wasted? <laughs> Are you talking to us? What? We can't, hear, we can't even hear you mumbling over there. Oh. How's that coffee coming? Off the shit is how. All being like, in cups and everything. <laughs> Be sure it makes it to the table before it accumulates that strange, unctuous film on the surface. Oh man. <laughs> oh, Dumbledore killed Lord English's parents. I think I already knew that after I read the ninth Harry Potter book. The secret one. So, uh, oh, let me look at the, uh, okay, so they've got their coffee. I just finished my mug of coffee. I will get another mug of coffee in a little bit at the top of the hour. So, what's with the big book you're writing in? Is that more wizard fan fiction? No, it's something like an extensive journal. I'm recording everything we've been through so far, and detailed notes on everything we know about the game. I'm also using it to document our research and extrapolate on the new session and players. So it's like your nigh unreadable game fact in tome form. Somewhat. You sure like to write big game guides. I don't look at it that way. I'm approaching it from a standpoint of responsible historical documentation. Don't you think people in the future will want to know about our story? I guess. I think it could be a very useful resource someday. It could be helpful to others beginning our, their own quests. Uh, chances of that seem pretty remote. I really wouldn't rule it out. Okay, totally sold on that suddenly, on account of not caring. So tell me about the new session. <laughs> so tell me about the new session. What is there to know? And most importantly, how is everything going to go wrong this time? From what I understand, everything already has gone wrong before the game even started, in many different ways than ours did. There are indications of thicker political intrigue, assassination attempts, and a usurpation of the throne more insidious than what we dealt with. But those examples still don't illustrate the fundamental fault with their session. Ours had a similar fault, it was a null session. Literature on the subject says null sessions are actually very common. It is any session resulting in failure, and as such, designed to result in failure from the start, due to Skya's comprehensive knowledge of its own fate, and that of all its illumina, and that of all its illumines. <coughs> Biologically speaking, it is its ex ah, blah blah blah. Biologically speaking, it's to be expected that null sessions far outnumber the successful ones. When it comes to reproductive systems, overwhelming redundancy is commonplace. A universe has a reproductive system that spreads many seeds, as it were, most of which never come to fruition. So we shouldn't feel too bad about our results, really. It was quite par for the course. But then, it would also seem that exceedingly few null sessions result in the birth of a massive green star fueled by two dead universes, for what it's worth. Okay, but I thought the whole point of this, uh, the scratch thing, is it gave us a chance to still win. But you're saying the new session has a fault too? Well, yes, there's more to it though. The new session is essentially our session, rebooted with different parameters, which also affected the original conditions of our universe. And strangely, it seems the new one is a null session as well but within a much less common subset of all Null Sessions. This one is referred to as a Void Session. A Void Session, you say? <clears throat> hmm. 
Hang on a sec. Let me check something in my homestack notes real quick. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. Anywho, I didn't see what I thought might be there. Oh, hello. This is either Durs or Prospect. Okay, which is that? Okay, which is what? It's very simply, I, I could do that call range, but basically it's just a Google Doc with like a bunch of like nonsense <laughs> thrown in. It's very simply a session in which nothing is prototyped before entry at all. Hence, by sky is preemptive all knowing. Wait, a session in which nothing is prototyped before entry? Oh, so none of them are gonna end up prototyping their their kernel sprites. That's interesting. Yeah, cause uh, cause Godcat prevented Jane from prototyping hers before entry, so it seems like all four of them are not going to prototype their kernel sprites. It's very simply a session in which nothing is prototyped before entry at all. Hence, by Skya's preemptive all-knowing and its influence on the rest of the Incipisphere, there are not even any towers on Prospit or Durst built to, built to receive the split kernels. See? Weird. Why would these alt-universe players fuck up in such an obvious and stupid way? I don't know what specifically led to the failure to prototype anything, prototype anything, but it doesn't really matter. As I said, the session was designed this way before they began playing. Any efforts to prototype may have been in vain regardless, possibly subject to sabotage. Definitely subject to sabotage. Didn't you say at some point that not prototyping anything would be really bad? I do remember that. <clears throat> Yes, it's just another way to create an infertile session. Though, by a less catastrophic and bloody route we took to achieve the same result. By contrast, it leads to a rather harmless, uneventful session. Underlings remain unaugmented, and so does the royalty. And while this may sound advantageous to the players, it's a curse in disguise. The lack of prototypings which keeps adversaries unevolved has the same influence on the battlefield. Without successive prototypings, the battlefield will never reach its final form, which must be fertilized to grow a new universe. Ah, uh, yes. So there's the, uh... There's the battlefield in unfertilized form, I'm guessing. Oh! Hello! Are you about to blow up something? Little friend. Instead, it remains in its most basic form, stuck in an eternal stalemate. There's no there is nothing players in the Void Session can do to change this. They are resigned to live out the rest of their lives, rest, uh, live out the rest of their days in a dead end session. Still waiting to hear how this is in any way an improvement on all the shit we just escaped from. It's a vast improvement. The new session is a blank slate without a ridiculously short time limit for victory like ours had. There will be no time limit at all, in fact. Once we arrive, once we arrive, ostensibly, that is when the nature of the session will change. It won't be classifiable as either a null or void session anymore. It will be something which, as far as I can tell, is unique. The fully matured battlefield from our session can be used to make the new one viable. The path to success will be made possible by a combination of efforts and assets from both iterations. Usually, scratched sessions are absolute resets, and involve no direct influence from the first attempt at all. I can't find any precedent for our situation. Jade has our battlefield, right? Yes. So, she shows up and drops it in Skya, and then we take the results of all that damn frog breeding we did and stick the thing in there somehow, and we sit back and wait for it to do its huge ribbit or whatever, and we're golden? Pretty much. As long as there is an actual vacancy in the center of Skya when we get there. Okay, so basically the plan is they're going to take the Skya from their session and like drop it into the Skya in the Void session. That's interesting. Oh, it's so like when you bring the two when you bring the two things together, it's like null and void. Yo, how's it going, cookies? Happy Saturday. 
Oh no, stuff got blown up. Is that going to be a problem? I don't think so. Even if it were, it would be a trivial obstacle. But as it is, I think the forces opposing these players are clandestinely working toward the same goal as we are. From what I can tell, gestures of antagonism, while certainly posing legitimate danger, have been factored in as critical stepping stones to one destination shared by all parties. I don't know why this is, or what the motives are yet. The appearance is one of clear sailing ahead, but traces of conspiracy are everywhere. Okay, but conspiracies aside, did it ever really look like clear sailing to you? That's not what I was seeing. We're going to arrive, and then soon after Jack is going to show up, and then we have to beat him, right? So, there kind of is a time limit. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of a good analogy there, Hedro, from what I understand. All right. Meanwhile, there's Jack and there's Beck Blanco. Yes, we will have to deal with Jack before all is said and done, and that will definitely be a major challenge. But it is not impossible, at least not by design. When I said there would be no time limit in this session, I was talking about something more specific. There will be no reckoning. Oh, why not? It's a logical consequence of any void session. The battlefield never evolves, and therefore the more extensive war between Prospit and Durst never takes shape. It is only when the Prospidian King falls in battle that the reckoning can be initiated by the forces of Durst. The meteors then rush to destroy the battlefield, while Skya redirects them through defense portals for as long as it can. Thus, if there is no war, there is no reckoning, no meteors, and no imminent threat of failure. This is, of course, good news for Earth as well. During the reckoning, Skya redirects all incoming meteors to the only place it can, Earth. So it turns out that players who initiate a void session are not actually condemning their home planet to an apocalyptic wasteland after they leave. In the new instance of our universe, Earth is just fine. Sort of. So, no meteors came at all? You mean by fucking up and having to scratch, we also sort of saved Earth in the process? Again, sort of. And it's not that there were no meteors whatsoever, just the vast majority of the destructive onslaught never showed up. But delivering the temple to the site of the forge is still integral to jumpstarting the session. That meteor, however, could have been propelled through a portal by any means, not just via the Reckoning. I see. Well, what about the players themselves? They had to arrive on meteors too, didn't they? I guess the baby meteors were some exceptions too, right? Yes, but they weren't flung through portals in their own session, nor will they be created there. They were created in our session and sent back through our portals, just like us. Oh, so that kind of confirms that the kids, that the alpha kids were created in the beta session. Which I think we already knew, but Rose has kind of like explicitly stated that. <clears throat> oh, there they are. Oh wait, this is all eight of them. So hang on, we've got Jade, Jane, Roxy, Dave, or is that Roxy and Dirk? No, I think, it was, I think it was Dave. And then Jake and John, and Rose and Dirk. All right. So Dave's like, Mah. <laughs> To understand what happened, it really helps to understand exactly what a scratch scratch is. When John severely damaged the beat mesa on your planet, sorry, hang on, I accidentally unplugged my headphones. Oh, Dirk has Cal, Dave has the pony, okay. It's a little bit hard to tell, their tell Dirk and Dave's baby selves apart for me. See, to understand what happened, it really helps to understand exactly what a scratch is. When John severely damaged the Beat Mesa on your planet and sent it off to Skya to release its temporal energy there, you could view it as kind of a request. 
We were asking Skaya to change everything at a fundamental level, and we gave it the energy to do so. But Skaya is a very passive entity. It only knows and sees, but it never quite acts. When it is asked to change everything, there's only so much it has control over. In fact, it has control over exactly one thing, the defense portals. It can decide to send important meteors to different points in time than originally planned, thus creating alternate realities. Offshoots of promise, rather than futility. And it turns out the most important meteors of all tend to be the ones delivering the young players to their planet. So all it has to do to change everything is tweak their destination times a bit. All internally prompted changes in the post-Scratch universe are decided entirely by this modest adjustment to the parameters. It's a very simple concept, actually. Yet the consequences are dramatic. It results in not only a hard reset for the session, but a partial reset for the universe, too, due to the mainly, ca mainly causal entanglements between a session and its originating universe. What do you mean, tweak the destination times? Where do they get sent to? A variety of different time periods. The simplest way to look at it is to picture the original destinations of our two groups of four ectobabies, and switch them. What? Though this is a, just a slight oversimplification. While it's roughly true, Skaya had some peculiar whims this time. So, that reminds me how at the end of Act 6, Act 2, we saw that uh, um, Roxy and Dirk, at least, were both like in the future. So it sounds like what Rose is saying here is that part of what happened during the scratch is that those four, the four Alpha Ecto Babies, um, the times that they were originally going to be sent to, that got like tweaked a little bit. So they got sent to different times as well is what I'm getting out of this huh so so this is a this is a chart it looks like Oh, I see. So, so before the scratch, so here we have, uh, so here we have Jake and, uh, and Jane. So they were originally sent to the year 1900. And then Roxy and Dirk originally sent to, this is probably what, about 1970, 1980 or something like that. And then the four beta kids were sent to the year 2000. Roughly the year 2000, a little bit before the year 2000. But after the scratch, this all got changed. So, so, so John and Jade got sent to the year 1900. So John and Jade switched places with Jake and Jane. They got sent to like around the original time. Um, Roxy and Dirk got sent to a few centuries in the future where Rose and Dave got sent to where Roxy and Dirk were originally sent to. Interesting. Um oh, good question cookies. I don't I don't have I don't have like a donation thing set up, but um you can always cheer bits if you want to. Um it's not a requirement, but I always appreciate it. <clears throat> yes, I was, I figure they have to be communicating via like trolling or some some form of time travel uh, communication. While most landed in time periods corresponding with the original group, it seems that two of the new players arrived four centuries ahead of everyone else for some bizarre reason. Uh. But they're still apparently able to communicate with their cos their co-players through, I guess, some Trollian-like technology. And they're still able to establish game connections with the others. So this stands as an odd, but otherwise not terribly significant detail. So, uh, in this alt uni in this alt universe group of us and them, which ones are the actual players? I'll give you a hint, it isn't us. Fuck, why did I know that was going to be the answer? And to think that usually I'm the one accused of knowing the future. 
I don't know if I'm ready to process the ramifications of this bullshit. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, cookies. <laughs> But yes, if, if you feel inclined to give anything, um, s bits through through Twitch is really the means <laughs> of doing so for me. And I appreciate that too, thank you. Alright. Would you find it less disconcerting if the players were alternate versions of us? Man, at least I'm used to dealing with alt daves. I've been fucked deep in alt daves before. It's a goddamn delight if you want to know the truth. But I don't even know what to think about. What? Meeting a deceased figure of authority as a peer? <laughs> Let's not even talk about it, okay? Can we slow down this meteor, delay the meetup, and maybe fight Jack for a little while? I honestly thought you would find the idea exciting. I know I'm looking forward to it. But your mom was just a nice alcoholic spinster who liked wizards who you complained about for no reason. She wasn't anything like an untouchable master of irony who could replace the meat in your sandwich before it even occurred to you what the fuck you were chewing. Let me ask you this, did your mom even- did your mom ever wiggle a puppet in your face even once? Not that I recall, but anecdotes like that just make me more curious to meet him personally. Fine. Well, you can be on bro duty then. I'll be the ambassador to your mom. And no, that wasn't actually meant as a sick burn it sounded like. She's your mom too, though. Yeah, I know. I'll be the ambassador. I'll be the ambassador to my mom then. <laughs> Sounds pretty stupid when I say it that way. Whatever. I'll be the fucking one man. I'll be the fucking one man. Oh, thanks, hetero. Yay! Bits, bits, bits. Thank you, friend. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Th sounds pretty stupid when I say it that way. Whatever. I'll be the fucking one-man welcome wagon for the John and Jade teen old people, and also our mom. That's the plan. So when we finally see them, we can get our shit into formation like trained acrobats. Like, I'll blow a whistle and we make a human period. Got it? <laughs> human pyramid. <laughs> I'll blow a whistle and we make a human pyramid. Got it? That way we could totally avoid anything awkward. You do realize we've seen her already, right? What? When? Months ago, in a dream, she was floating around in Durst pajamas, asleep. Wait, that was her? Yes. Oh. Huh. You're wondering why I didn't tell you? No. You're specifically wondering why I wasn't forthcoming with an answer to your question at the time. Hey, who was that choice babe in the pajamas? God fucking damn it. <laughs> You don't find it nostalgic at all? Retracing the steps of some of our Freudian semi-blunders in conversations past? No, what a load of shit. Stuff said between you and me before we knew we were related. We both know that was a lot of horseplay bullfuckery between, like, smart-ass ten-year-olds or whatever. You can't seriously have taken any of that seriously. Wink. Okay, Cole Rains, well, if you're able to, if you're able to come back, that's great. If not, uh, you know, we'll see you next time. Uh, don't ever do that again. All these fucking mom traps and sister traps. What a joke. I hope Skya gets to have a good laugh over shit like this. Wait, I forgot Skya doesn't laugh. It just sees and knows. It's like a huge blue perv. That's mad jazz for kid cest. What are you people even talking about? Wink. Don't you wink at her. Hey, Kanaya, here's a pro tip. That wink meant Jack Dick. She's just being weird. I feel as though this conversation has utterly outmaneuvered my constructive involvement. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm pretty much ollieing outy too. I got some shit to attend to. After you. <coughs> oh, but now Car Cat is showing up. Ah, uh, why does that always happen? Everybody out of the goddamn way. I got a lab full of humans, a mouth full of yelling, and a tortured psychological profile full of totally hysterical emotions and unaired grievances at practically everybody. Carcat is broken, guys. Yeah, okay, hold on. If I can settle down a tick, I should be able to make more sense shortly. Just one... <sighs> Maybe you should lie down on the couch? Fuck. <sighs> no. Dude, what is the matter with you? 
Wow, okay. That was a pretty terrible entrance. Anyway, where was I? Oh man, driving to Montana from Washington? Wow, I was just out there, Mind Cookies. I was just out in Seattle, so... I flew over Montana on the way. <laughs> Don't know, but I was just leaving. Not so fast, Strider. This heavily concerns you. It concerns you exclusively, in fact. Where do you think you're going? Just stepping out to do a thing, which is not your business. Like my inflamed, quaking golf sphincter, it's not. Tell me, are you by any chance going to have some company when you step out to do this thing? Notice the two heavily dramatized enclosure talons surrounding that word, <laughs> which I am scornfully pantomiming with my own two hands, as presently being demonstrated for you. Yeah, sure. Oh? Who would that be, may I ask? Well, probably the mayor. He's usually down for whatever. I'm not talking about the fucking mayor, and you fucking know it. Hey, don't be saying shit about the mayor. The mayor rules. He's like my best fucking friend. He's not a mayor. He's the mayor of Fuckstick Junction, located smack dab in the middle of pretend ass nowhere. He's a mayor, you douche. His thing says mayor. <laughs> oh my god. I love that. He's a mayor, you douche. His thing says mayor. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny, but I do. It says mayo, and he wrote the R himself. He's at best a mayo. Who ever heard of a mayo? It's every bit as imaginary as his identity as an elected official. No, mayo is like grub sauce, but without grubs. Who the fuck ever heard of grub sauce without grubs? What's it made of then, genius? Like, uh... I don't know. It's white, and it just sort of exists. You don't ask about mayo. That's not what you do with mayo. <laughs> this is great. Isn't it funny how quickly your bullshit unravels when someone intelligent actually holds you accountable? You are fucking busted, Strider. You are busted about mayo, and you are busted about Terezi. <laughs> you are pathetic. This is why you all stormed in here out of breath. What did you actually- what, did you actually sprint all the way across the meteor to tell me this? What I do with my legs and how fast I move them is my business, you shit. Yeah, and what I do with mine is mine. Watch me make them tame- watch me make them make me leave. I said stay your ass put, we're talking here. Dude, don't touch my cape. Huh. What? I can't believe I seriously just said, dude, don't touch my cape to somebody and was serious about it. <laughs> oh my god. This is great. Okay, um, real quick, guys. It is, uh, I think, quarter after? Yeah, about quarter after 11. My time. Uh, I'm going to go get some more coffee and uh, stretch a little bit, and then we will come right back with more Act 6 Intermission 2. Don't go nowhere. Also, I will pet the dog. All right, bye, Mind Cookies. Thanks for hanging out with us. See you next time. All right. Oh God, this song. All right. Okay, look, I'm nowhere near your precious stupid cape. Just listen. Before you go off to snog Terezi in your idiotic little village of nutrition cylinders, hear me out. Man, you are so overblowing this. But I don't think that I am. Yeah, you are. You have some idea about us that we're getting up to... I'm oh, sorry. You have some idea about us or what we're getting up to? So, we've done a few things together the past the time. So what? 
I don't even think you could call them dates or anything. What the fuck would even qualify as a date on this gross dark meteor? Dave, can we just cut the shit? I am not an imbecile. You are both plainly tipping into flushed territory, irrespective of environmental factors or whatever lame conditions it is humans believe to be optimal for pursuing a mate sprint ship. Anyone can see that. It's the shittiest kept secret on this meteor. Probably even the fucking mayor gets it, and let's face it, he's a little slow. Do you really think you could pull the wool beast material over the eyes of a hardened veteran of romantic studies? We have one of those? <laughs> I... <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I have seen thousands of troll romance films, each dealing with topics as far more subtle and complex than your pedestrian human mind could ever grasp. And in case you've forgotten, I've already watched hundreds of your more primitive but moderately entertaining romance films. Remember how I downloaded a fuck ton of them after discovering your species? I'm a curious man, Dave. You could learn from me. Yeah, I remember. Haven't you only watched a bunch of shitty Dane Cook movies on Infinite Loop since we left? You're severely exaggerating, but yes, I have sampled his work. Dude, you know you're only pretending to be a huge fan of his bullshit to piss me off. Again, look at how self-absorbed you're being. I happen to think he has a brilliant comedic mind for a human. <sighs> it turns out that exact sentence is my one weakness. You win, bro. You got your girl back. <laughs> That's great. Oh, shut up. I'm not here to debate you on the finer points of cinema or to get my girl back. How desperate do you think I am? I'm actually here to do the opposite. I wanted to tell you I'm totally okay with it. Oh, okay then. But just listen and try to keep an open mind. I know that's hard for you. Here, please take a look at this. Oh, wow. Hello. What, what what do we have here? Oh no, what the hot mess of fresh fuck am I looking at? It's an Alternian romance novel. <laughs> now look, I'm not vouching for this particular piece of literature. It's actually pretty trashy, and if you're interested, I could recommend much better things to you. It's just this one illustrates the concept very clearly. Wait, is he suggesting like... A four-way relationship? So, Dave and Trezzy and himself, and I guess one other party, perhaps, I... What concept? It's a pretty typical case of quadrant vacillation as applied to an overlapping group of romantic pairings. You lost me at quadrant. For future reference, that's the word that always lets me know it's time to check out of a sentence. Will you pipe down and just hear me out? It's really simple. Think of it as being similar to one of your primitive human love triangles. Though this is a quadrangle. Those are much more common in our society and entertainment. And four is pretty much the minimum value for love, hate, and drangles. End drangles? God damn it. <laughs> now, here's what is actually going on with this group of characters. Pay attention. Hey, look at me. Eyes over here. Good. See the two heroes in the middle partaking in their flushed embrace? Pretty much your typical low blood red rom pairing. Their, dyna their dynamic is the grub loaf and tuber paste of the overall arc. Uh, but what have we here? There are some nefarious high bloods in the picture too. This is where it gets interesting. The guy on the left is an old caliganous flame from the male low blood's past and has re entered the picture. Again, nothing out of the ordinary. He can continue to court his mate spirit and kismesis without conflict. It's a perfectly amicable arrangement that everyone's totally down with. Yes, this is this is great explaining music. What is that huge beefcake troll even doing? Is he grinding against the little dude's shoulder? What is even going on? Why the fuck is he nude? No questions yet. So then all that so then that's all fine. Pretty boilerplate conditions for unfolding rom drama, but there's a twist. The male high blood and low blood start to have flushed feelings for one another, and this results in some red infidelity between the low blood pair. Obviously, this is where the fireworks start going off. The red feelings between the low bloods turn to black, and thus begins what is referred to as quadrant vacillation. Meanwhile, the two males are also vacillating between red and black, because you don't just let go of a rivalry so easily. What's going on with the other chick? All grabbing at the other one down there in the corner. Yeah, well, it gets even more complicated than that. Probably more than needed for the sake of making the point. 
In the heat of their vacillation, during an especially black phase, the low blood female waxes red for a notorious and especially brutal high blood female. So they have their thing on the side. But even that starts vacillating too, because the original pair just keeps spinning like a top. We don't need to get bo we don't need to get bogged down in the quadrangle dynamic though, and for our purposes, the fourth party is a distraction. Our purposes? What the fuck are our purposes? The thing is, vacillation always adds a lot of drama to everything, but that doesn't mean it can't be viable. It can totally work, and everyone can be reasonable about it, it really just comes down to a matter of sensible scheduling. You must be out of your fucking mind if you think I want to know where you're going with this. Dave, please, just read the book, okay? It's all in the book. <clears throat> oh my gosh, did Rose just yoink the book? I'm not reading that shit. I can't even read your stupid troll language. Why would you think I can? I think you should reconsider. I can translate for you. I'll read the whole damn thing aloud if you want. Seriously, it could really expand your limited human think pan on stuff. There's a lot here that's applicable to our situation. There is nothing even slightly applicable about any of that bullshit to our situation. Don't be dense. Of course there is. Terezi and I have been on the verge of vacillating like this for a long time. It's about time we killed the suspense and just acknowledged it. You and she seem bent on developing something in the flush quadrant, and like I said, I'm fine with that. If we can just get our shit straightened out, we can be like these vacillating pairs that alternate between red and black, but in a way that's complementary with each other's patterns. Oh my god, why is this happening? Like, while she and I are black, you and she are red. But then, when she and I are red, you and she... Uh, I don't know if humans are really capable of black feelings. I guess that's up to you. Maybe you can just, like, sit those periods out. Take, like, take a break, you know? You've completely lost it, dude. I can't believe for a fucking second this is reasonable shit to propose even on Troll World. You just totally snapped. Snapped like a fucking fox? This makes perfect sense. Like I said, it's just a matter of responsible scheduling. Here, let me show you. I need some paper. Where's some paper? <laughs> oh my gosh. He's really drawing a diagram, isn't he? Or a schedule. <laughs> I thought this is fantastic. Look, it's perfectly simple. Hang on while I draw the guidelines. Oh no, you are not making another shipping grid, dude. It's not a shipping grid, just some rows and columns for a schedule. It's a grid, you're drawing a goddamn grid. I'm not letting you draw a grid for this stupid shit. Come on, look here, these are the days of the week. Then we can each have rows for those days and we can draw a heart or a spade for any given day. That way we know what's up in advance and avoid unpleasant conflicts. Put the fucking pen down. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, cut it out! Don't touch me! Do not draw a shipping grid. Do not do it. It's not a shipping grid, you obtuse fuck! This is fucked up. Put it down! No! You are not drawing a grid to organize our goddamn dating lives. That is some straight up crackpot motherfucking noise I will not abide. Fuck you! Let me draw! Stop drawing the shipping grid! It is not a shipping grid! This is not a shipping! This is not shipping, you heinous tool! This is common sense! You will not draw anything that even remotely resembles a grid. <laughs> God, this is great. <laughs> Do not draw an arrangement of squares or otherwise interlocking polygons. Let go! You will not draw a spreadsheet for the purpose of allocating time spent with a mutual girlfriend, you horse's ass. This is exactly the shit I do not want to see. Look, I just drew a square. Get ready to see lots more of those. No, stop. Do not draw any additional squares. Do not draw any quadrilaterals or trapezoids or rectangles or fucking endrangles, and especially as fuck not any goddamn rhombuses. I do not want to see your lines making any right angles. Do you understand? In my mind's eye, I am picturing a, in my mind's eye, I'm picturing a beautiful lattice of lines and compartments interlocking with sublime precision at 90 degree angles. I imagine this modular reticulation as an elegant vessel, if you will, for the grand synthesis of our shared shipping dreams. No, that is the perfect example of what you shouldn't be drawing. Yes, no, fuck yes. Oh look, another square, sort of. Kind of wobbly, it'll have to do. No, you fuck. Wait, I think it's coming. Here it comes, my first ship is going in the square. Put the goddamn pen down, you piece of shit! Hell no! Yes! What is your problem? Ow, fuck! 
<laughs> this might be the best conversation. <laughs> oh my god, this is fantastic. This is so sick. Does she even know you're doing this? Doing what? Splitting up her time in a grid for your stupid rotating hate date plan. She will soon enough. What a presumptuous sack of shit. Put the pen down. No, I'm drawing. Step away from your dumb, ugly scribble grid. Get lost. You're messing up Rose's book. You smell bad. Don't talk to me about rank smells. You are the fucking big man of smelling bad. You dominate the paint with your stonk. My Lucis brought things home that smelled more appealing than- My Lucis brought things home that smelled more appealing than you. Important fact. 100% of what he brought home was either a dead animal or literal feces. Yeah? Well, check it out. You smell like if someone took a dump on a butt. How could she stand you with her sensitive nose? Have you ever even washed that ridiculous outfit? They're magic fucking pajamas. They stay like permaclean or something. They're enchanted as comfy as fuck. Give me the pen. No, it's mine now. I'm keeping it on principle. <laughs> oh my goodness. Car cat. Whoa, man, what are you doing? Why are you drawing all these human dicks? How do you even know what they look like? Have you been watching? I'm not drawing those. You're making me draw them. Stop that. No way. This book is now like our fight-fueled Ouija board of cock. Ah, uh, stop. Don't. No, fuck. Okay, no, you drew that one. You drew that one. Don't pretend you didn't. Are you sure, man? That's the spooky thing about penis Ouija. You can never be sure who did the dicks. Was it you or me or maybe a ghost? Fuck, let go of me. Give me the pen. No, yes. No, yes. Fine, take it. No. <laughs> what? We're still drawing. <laughs> let go. Oh my god, this is great. <laughs> Are you kidding? This is a fucking masterpiece. We have to see this through. I'm trying to let go of the stupid pen, but you won't let me. We are in the shit now. We are motherfucking entrenched in this bitch. <laughs> you crazy fuck! We're running out of room, Rose. Can you turn the page for us? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> This altercation is becoming uncomfortably physical. Get the fuck away from me. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Shut up and draw another penis. <laughs> Shut up and draw another penis. <laughs> you don't even understand the social implications of all this hostile touching and grabbing, do you? I don't feel that way about you, Strider. Just step off. <laughs> oh my god. Man, if you want to look at this that way, then that's your business. This is just an old-fashioned beatdown where I'm from. Where, this is just an old-fashioned beatdown where I'm from. Deal with it. Why don't you old-fashioned go fuck yourself? Stop biting my cape. <laughs> Stop biting my cape. Fuck <laughs> you! Oh my god. Oh my gosh! And Kanaya's standing there, and she is like some kind of turned on about this. Rawr! Shit! Oh my god, this is amazing. Struggle! So he's like trapped in Dave's cape. Kanai is standing there watching. Rose is standing there watching. Are you serious? <laughs> Dude, unreal. Are you like a cape magnet? Hold still. <laughs> oh my gosh. Huh? <laughs> Suplex. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, there's an arm right there. You guys, you see that? There's a little white arm. It's that little white arm again. Booyah! I still don't know what the, that arm is, but uh, someday I will find out. The day is coming where I will know what's going on there. Everybody stop what you're doing immediately. 
Whatever it might be, another dream bubble is approaching rapidly. Everyone man your stations. By which I mean, go about your business as usual, I guess. Unless you want to meet up here and check it out. Over! <coughs> okay. I think they've gotten all their aggression out. Meanwhile! John and Jade are probably not having the same problems that Dave and Carcat are. Ghostbusters 2 MMORPG. Log in, new account. Wait, what? John, I really think we're scraping the bottom of the barrel here. No way! This game rules! I just never gave it much playing time before because... Well, I guess I always had better things to do. That's sort of my point. Where did you even get this? Years ago, I found it in a store in the bargain rack. It was only a dollar. Isn't that awesome? Uh... There's a Ghostbusters 2 MMO RPG. That is fantastic. <clears throat> oh my god, this is amazing. Knack, 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 glub, glub, glub. I don't understand anything. ASL. <laughs> oh my gosh. Bustin' makes me feel good. I don't really think this is my kind of game, but I will play it with you today because it is technically your birthday. Heart. Yes! You won't be disappointed. How many people did you get to play this? Um, I don't know. I only showed it to a few people, but I guess hundreds are playing it now? Nobody's very good at it, though. I keep trying to tell the salamanders and chess guys not to cross the streams, but they keep crossing the streams. Oh no, don't cross the streams. Just between you and me, I think a lot of them aren't very bright. Why can't you cross the streams? Jade, please. It is just something you can't do when you're a Ghostbuster because it spells big trouble. Everyone knows that. <laughs> oh, that's right. Dave Sprite is there. You should hurry up and make a character already so we can get started. Let me just see what's going on here. So we got the Salamander people. We've got Dursites, Prospidians. <coughs> I'm working on it. There are so many options. What kind of Ghostbuster should I make? Just any old Ghostbuster. As long as he looks awesome and he means business. Why does it have to be a he? Why can't it be a she? That's what I say. Hmm. I will begin organizing our squad. What do you have to do? Well, first we need to buy an old abandoned fire station to use as a headquarters. Luckily, half the city is composed of abandoned fire stations that are for sale. This game is actually really stupid in a lot of ways now that I can think about it. No! Hey, shut up. I take it back. It's great in every way. Sure, John. Whatever you say. Okay, now I have to find us a mission. Got to hire a sassy secretary. Just have to peruse this extensive palette of sarcastic redheaded ladies. Okay, here's a good one. Then we wait for a phone call. This can take anywhere from 10 seconds to several hours. Are you serious? But that's fine. There's lots to do in the station to kill time. Let's talk, like, talk to Slimer and get slimed by Slimer. Uh, okay, I guess that's pretty much all there is to do. What about that fire pole there? Can't you go down the fire pole? The fire pole is strictly decorative. Uh, are you almost finished making your character? Yeah, I think I'm done. I'm pretty happy with him. <laughs> this game sounds horrible. Horribly brilliant. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is a cool face. Harley. <clears throat> Jade. That is absolutely the shittiest Ghostbuster I have ever seen. No way! Yes, it is so yes way. He's adorable! What are you even talking about? Jade, I thought you were going to take this game seriously. That is not a serious Ghostbuster. No ghost could possibly fear that thing. I don't want ghosts to be afraid of him. I want to make friends with some ghosts, if at all possible. <laughs> That's great. <clears throat> it is not possible. Ghosts are known to be cruel and mischievous. <laughs> Sorry. Cruel and mischievous. <laughs> mischievous. Why can't I pronounce mischievous today? I don't know. They will not want to befriend your fox man. They will only want to cover him in slime and then fly away. I bet Jade is totally gonna like find a way to make friends with actual ghosts in, in the game. I really think you should consider redesigning him. Nope, I am keeping him. Okay, well, if you want to turn our squad into a fucking joke, then that's your business. John, stop gatekeeping, dude. <clears throat> Shut up or I'll give him a pink jumpsuit. Ugh. But seriously, 
Those head swap options are for such noobs. I feel it's only fair to warn you. I think I will manage to survive the embarrassment in front of a bunch of salamanders and crocodiles. Okay, fine. You get a pass, but only because you yourself are a furry. <laughs> hey, you know what? If that's how she wants to play the game, then that's totally cool with me. Live your life. <clears throat> Thank you. What? Nothing. Is someone messaging you, messaging you through the game? Hee <laughs> hee. Who is it? <laughs> Damn it, Jade. It's Dave Sprite. He's playing too. Oh, don't tell him any of our strategies. He's the enemy. We have strategies? Um, okay. First, tell him we have strategies. Then, don't tell him them. <laughs> oh god, what is it now? Did you know Dave Sprite is a funny guy? Eh, he's alright, I guess. I give most of his jokes a passing grade, sometimes as high as a solid B+. I just told him you said that. That's fine, he and I keep no secrets. Dave Sprite says to tell you, you're basically welcome for being born 14 years ago and one year ago, you ungrateful douche. Oh, like him taking credit for my existence isn't so old by now. Hey, Jade, why do you still call him Dave Sprite? Um, because he is Dave Sprite? I just call him Dave. Isn't that easier? I mean, he is Dave after all, right? Well, yeah, but he's kind of different from Dave. Psh, he is so not different. Dude is just a magical orange Dave with wings and also says caw sometimes. I know, but there are other differences. Oh, man. So, like, <clears throat> I'm kind of, like, from this conversation alone, and maybe we'll see as we go on, but I'm kind of sensing, like, maybe a bit of jealousy uh, from John on, like, the part of, like, Dave Sprite. I don't know. <clears throat> Like what? It's hard to explain. Just some slight differences in personality, I guess. He still raps sometimes. Yes, so? I just thought I would mention that. Okay, I will admit I can't really tell if his rapping style has changed. Trust me, it hasn't. I don't know if the differences are because he is a sprite, or because he lived for a while in a different timeline. Well, weren't you a sprite before? How different did you feel then? I wasn't a sprite. My dead dream self was a sprite. Then I kind of merged with her when I became a god tier. Oh, right. So, half of you was a sprite? I guess? It's more like I'm still the me I always was, but inherited some of her memories. But they are pretty vague. Do you remember what it was like being Jade Sprite? I remember being dead for a long time and making friends, mostly trolls. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, none that we know of now, that I can remember at least. They feel like such distant memories, like they were barely real. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they're like stuck on a, <clears throat> they're like stuck on that little ship for like three years. You're probably getting a little stir crazy and it's gonna wear on you like over time. Like I'm guessing like toward the end of the three year journey, they're gonna be like more and more like at each other's throats and like cranky with each other. Also, like, I love this tune. Da -da 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 -da. <clears throat> um, let's see, where was I? They feel like such distant memories, like they were barely real. Hmm. I have to admit, I am a little disappointed in the dream bubble thing. By the way you were describing it, I really thought we would dream about them on this trip more often. Yeah, me too. Uh, maybe it's something about this place. Maybe it's something about this place we're traveling through. I don't know. When was the last time you visited one in your sleep? Man, that was weeks ago, I think. Yeah. And then, when I do dream about them, it's just kind of weird. Either I'm alone in my own memory, talking to figments of my imagination, or I dream about someone we know, like a troll we have talked to, and I get excited. But then it turns out they don't know who I am. It's like a version of them that died before they ever even knew us. And it's just kind of awkward. Yep. And I still haven't seen Dave or Rose at all. Have you? 
Nope. Yeah. I'm starting to think it's not going to happen. I wonder if we're just not sleeping at the same times. I don't think that's it. <clears throat> for one thing, considering where we are, I don't think there is such a thing as the same time for us. Heh. <laughs> that's true. You think the afterlife is just fucking with us, Jade? Maybe. But it's probably more like the way it used to be with the clouds in Skya. They didn't always show you things. But when they did, they were selective about what they would let you see. Like, they would make sure you saw whatever you needed to see to make sure things would go the right way. I always thought I knew so much, but in retrospect, they gave me only a tiny glimpse of the big picture. That is so infuriating. I guess. It never felt that way when all I was doing was looking up at some clouds. <laughs> I was happy to see whatever was there, but I guess it's different in a situation like this. When you miss your friends and you kind of wish the dream bubbles would play along. Yeah, oh well. I guess it's only two more years. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I love this. There's like a bunch of Ghostbusters like out in the field. There's like a little picnic blanket. There's like a couple of flying Ghostbuster cars and a beach ball and a few Slimers. What do you think they'll be like by then? Do you think Car Cat will have driven them all insane? <laughs> Probably. Or maybe they will all be better friends with each other than they. Maybe they'll all be better friends with each other than they are with us. Hmm. Well, look at it this way. By the end of our trip, will you be better friends with a bunch of Salamanders than you are with Rose and Dave? I don't know. There are some pretty charming salamanders on this ship. That is true. But I know what you mean. Things have a way of changing. Like, have you thought at all about what it's going to be like when you see Dave again? I mean, after the way things are going with you and Dave Sprite? Um, what do you mean the way things are going? Jade, please. What? Uh, you are not fooling anyone with your coy shenanigans. What has he been telling you? Nothing. You really think he would talk about any of that with me? There are just some obvious conclusions a guy is trying to make about stuff. Well, I guess I don't know what's going on with that. Hmm, I really don't. All right, fair enough. Um, what do you think he would think about that? Huh? The other Dave. I mean, hypothetically. Aha, so you have thought about it. I'm only wondering because you brought it up. Yes, yes I did. Then what do you think? I have no idea. We would probably never find out one way or the other regardless. Maybe. Well, what about you, John? What about me even? <laughs> what about me even? So another thing that just occurred to me is that... Um, so in the way that Dirk has the autoresponder and like they have conversations with each other, I'm remembering that like Dave and Dave Sprite also had conversations with each other too. So there's like... I love the parallels between, I love the parallels that are going on basically, between like Dave and Dirk, and Dirk and Car Cat, and all that stuff. There's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man, off in the distance. <clears throat> I wonder if like this entire sequence we're seeing right here was just like, like the premise of them playing a Ghostbusters 2 MMO. It was just like, while this conversation is going on, I wonder if it was like, like just an excuse just to make some wacky Ghostbusters Photoshop stuff. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's also that's also what made me kind of think of it. I smile. <clears throat> remember how you told me? Remember how you told me how Car Cat kept some sort of kept sort of trying to set you up with Rose? Yes. You told me this on more than one occasion, if I recall. What is your point? Well, I've kind of wondered to myself if you kept bringing it up on some because on some level you wanted that to be true. Oh man, Jade, listen. At this point, I could not give less of a rat's ass about romancy stuff. I would rather just play some games and chill out for several years on this flying magical boat. Is that too much to ask? Not at all. That is perfectly fine. When I catch up with our buddies, I'm sure I will give Rose a nice, friendly hug. 
Aww. Whereas I will offer Dave a tender bro embrace and shove Carcat down a flight of friendship stairs. <laughs> but that's it. It's all very complicated and bothersome, Jade. What? You know, matters of the heart. <laughs> Snicker. Okay, you may laugh at my choice of words, but it is true. It's really befuddling and distracting when you're on a major quest to make universes out of frogs. Who even needs it? I guess you have a point. <laughs> like, you remember that troll girl who was sort of into me? Mm-hmm. Friska! Well, okay, that seemed like a pretty big deal at the time. It really seemed like she liked me, but also she was probably insane? I, like, I mean, in a trollish, murderous kind of way. Yikes! But craziness notwithstanding, I didn't really know what to think. I guess I thought she was cool at the time. I was honestly kind of flummoxed about it. <clears throat> but the point is, when I all was said and done, that was just some stuff that happened over one day, which was a whole year ago already. I barely even remember what we talked about. By the time we meet up, she probably won't give a shit about me at all. Which, let's face it, is probably for the best. Uh... I think we make things more meaningful on our head when they're happening than they really are. Like, realistically, there were probably a lot of things that went on that day that didn't mean that much. Like, remember how you said you thought Carcat was getting the silly angry crush on you? That was just my hunch. Yeah. I mean, do you really think after three years he is still going to have the rage hots for you? I sincerely doubt it. At least, I hope not. I don't think even he is that crazy. Anyway, my point is, who even cares about all that? Romance and dating are dumb and boring. We are legendary heroes, and we have bigger fish to fry. Like that smug fat ass over there on the horizon. He sure looks pleased with himself. Just look at him. He thinks he is the undisputed king of that mountain or something. That is so outrageous. Follow me so we can seize the high ground against this hideous ocean-dwelling marshmallow man and steal all of his treasure. After you. <laughs> That's right, the rage hots. <clears throat> Ah, it's Jasper Sprite! One half of my ship, which is Jasper Sprite and Nepeta. Ahem! Jasper's, holy shit, another cake? <laughs> but there are still all these others we haven't touched. Nana is really baking up a storm today. Ahem! <laughs> Meow! Grrr. Jasper's, whoa, what are you doing? Meow! Meow, meow! Meow, 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 meow! Meow, 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 meow! Jasper Snow! It's fine if you want to sing me the birthday song, but for the love of God, don't meow it! You're going to rile her up! Meow, 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 John! Grrr. No, Jade, come on, please settle down! I can't help it! Grrr. Damn it! I'm really not mad at him, I swear! Meow, 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 meow! Woof! Oh my god. Oh, that's right, because because Jade was prototyped with, uh... Jade has some Beck in her. Doesn't she? Oh my god. Woof, 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 woof! This is like when Terra chases the cats around. Although, Terra doesn't like chase angrily after the cats. Terra just like wants to play with the cats. Like she'll go up to them and she'll like do a little play bow and the cats will be like <laughs> and she'll like chase them like a little bit and like try to corner them but she's not trying to hurt them or like really like chase after them to be mean. She just like wants to play. Terra just wants to play with everyone because she's like the happiest dog. And she thinks everyone is her friend. Oh my god, what happened there? Oh, Jade can like phase through walls, can't she? Because she has Beck powers. Whereas John cannot. Oh, did John get knocked out? John got knocked out, so John's like about to have a dream. <clears throat> oh, what's going on here? 
Where are you, John? Where are you? There's someone behind you. Whose foot is that? Is he about to get kicked in the face? <clears throat> Oh wait, is this about to be like... One of the alpha kids? <laughs> oh my gosh. It's Roxy! I had a feeling that was Roxy. Where are they, though? <laughs> and what is this? It's like Johnception. Oh my gosh! Mina? Who's Mina? Is this, uh... This is like the fairy type. Is this is this the Condes? <laughs> it's like fairy. She's just little Mina. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I have to. Hang on. I need to like make a little note here. Hey you, God tier boy. What are you doing there, blue boy? Hey, I'm talking to you. I like that pun. What are you doing here? <laughs> yes, you, the dork in the pajamas. Okay, the other dork in pajamas. Be all a pajama party up in here today. Hi, which troll are you? <laughs> which troll am I? I'm the best troll, dummy. Now get away from her. She's mine. Uh, I've been hunting her for a whale now. For a whale? What does that mean? It's a fish pun. Saying fish puns is obviously kind of this thing I do. Stupid, stupid get with. Oh, sorry. Obviously this kind of, kind of this thing I do, stupid. Get with the program. Oh, right. I thought it sounded kind of fishy. Oh, that's a good one. Not. Now beat it. You must be the sea troll. I heard about you. But I'm pretty sure we never talked. Have you by any chance seen Friska around? Or Carcat? Who the fuck are they? Um, your troll friends? Weren't no friends of mine if I never heard of them. You see this golden pointy deal here? Yes? I was gonna use it to poke some holes in that girl there and see what happens, so clam scray. Oh no, why would you do that? For the halibut. <laughs> uh, what? Halibut. Hell of it. Okay, that one wasn't that awesome. I thought I told you to clam scray. I'm not sure what clam scray means either. You mean go away? Holy mother gloving mackerel, you are a fucking idiot. Well, if you're not gonna go, maybe you can at least tell me something. <laughs> what? This is the afterlife, isn't it? Which means I'm dead, right? It looks like she is. Her eyes are like blank. Yes. Well, it's a dream bubble. So, yeah, you're probably a ghost. I knew it! <laughs> yes! You're excited to be dead? Excited? Hmm. Now that you mention it, yes. I am pretty flippin' excited. Why? Because it means my plan worked. Her plan? What plan? What plan? Why would I tell a hornless dork like you something like that? I don't know. Just curious about your spooky ghost plan is all. 
I'm curious about why a couple of freaks like you were sent to welcome me to hell. What are you, demons or something? Pretty lame demons, if you ask me. Way too frondly and stupid. No, we're humans. By which I mean aliens, I guess? So, like, you're dead aliens, huh? Who ever heard of an alien ghost? <laughs> I know, right? That's what I think sometimes. It's a strange combination of sci-fi things. Like, alien stuff is all about science, right? At least it is in movies. Aliens love science. But then ghosts have nothing to do with science? They belong to the supernatural realms. Which have more to do with religion, I guess? Or about a lot of, or about a lot of hocus pocus and superstition, maybe even magic. Science rarely enters the equation, unless it's something awesome like Ghostbusters, which makes ghosts and stuff all about science, even though the ghost science is obviously a bunch of total nonsense. Then I guess contact mixes aliens and ghosts because Jodie Foster saw her ghost dad in outer space, but then that was probably just a science projection from an alien to make her feel less sad about her dead dad. Not a real ghost or anything. I guess the lesson is that science and aliens teach us that ghosts and religion are fake? Although, it turns out ghosts and aliens are actually real, so maybe science and religion have been lying to us all along. Shrug. Nerd. Um, yeah, sorry. So, the girl. She like your mate spread or whatever? What? <laughs> no, I don't even know her. I kind of thought you knew who she was? Don't know who she is, but I know what she is. She's done. Huh? Ever do any baking, nerd? Yeah, a little. Then you know exactly what you do with something that's done. You stick a fork in it. Oh god. Pitch. C? Oh dear. Oh jeez, John is shoving her out of the way. Is John about to die a heroic death? No! Better think fast, suckerfish! Snoozing mystery girl, look out! Oh, does he wake up just in time? Whoa, is that John? Yeah, I think it is. What the hell's going on? Oh shit! John, watch out! Well, fuck. Looks like he's still an idiot. Wait, where did Dave and Carcat come from? Oh man. Well, that's a mystery. All right. Well, I think that's probably a good place to leave off, my friends. Because it is noon, so it is time to wrap up the stream. Um, so, next time, we will uh, finish... I think we're going to finish Act 6 Intermission 2 next time. Maybe even start a little bit of Act 6, Act 3. Um, so that's what we'll do next time. Now, reminder, those of you who missed it at the top of the stream, um, I'm actually going to be out of town again next Saturday, so there's no Homestuck next Saturday, uh, so next Homestuck stream will be on the 21st. Um, but in the meantime, my other streams are starting back up as well, now that I'm back from vacation. Uh, Monday, we're actually starting Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Uh, so that's Monday at 7pm Central Time, so if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to come by there. Um, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Time, we're going to continue finally with Night in the Woods. It's actually been a few weeks since I've done a Night in the Woods stream, so that's going to continue this week as well. Um, and then, like I said, our next Homestuck stream will be in two weeks. So, um, so there's that. Um, and then one last thing before we go, um, I have Discord. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and YouTube if you want to stay in touch that way. Um, if you want to get more Terra, you can also follow Terra on Instagram as well. Thank you, everyone. It was good to see you again. I miss you guys. Um, and uh, I will be back on Monday and Wednesday next week, like I said. And then our next Homestuck stream, once again, is going to be July 21st, two weeks from today. So thank you, friends. Have a great rest of your weekend. I will see you all later. Bye-bye.